Hi, Lydia. Joe. Hi. It is such an honor to be here to ask you 73 questions here in London. Come on and, Oh, thank you. And the first question is, what is this place? It's quite nice, isn't it? It's beautiful. But it turns out you play the Queen a few times and then they give you this. So I guess life has been kicked up a notch, hasn't it? Well, it's all right. Oh, I'm in the presence of a Queen. Where are my manners? Right oh, now? no, really, you don't have to. You don't have to do it. Do it again, but a little bit less. Uh, there we go. That's perfect. Uh, OK, OK, great. So what was your first professional acting role? Uh, it was Bruiser. And what was your first acting role ever? Jean Brody. How old were you? 16. What did you grow up watching constantly? Dynasty. Oh. Uh, Olivia, can I arrange anything for you and your guests? Oh, um, just a simple cup of tea would be lovely. Thank you, William. Olivia, I can't proceed with this interview until I ask you a question about this masterpiece on your wall. What is the story with this art here? Um, well, it's uh, from 1700. It's all original. It's, it's probably as old as your country. <laughs> you sure this wasn't painted more recently? No. Comedy or drama? Both. How do you know when you've nailed a scene? I, I don't think you do. I think you know when you haven't nailed it. What film do you never get tired of watching? It's a Wonderful Life. What performance is the best of all time? I don't think you can answer that. I have no idea. What's the craziest thing you've ever done auditioning for a role? I, I ate a cigarette butt. What good habit are you trying to adopt? Drinking more water. What show are you currently binge watching? The other two. What's the most outrageous thing that you've ever done in your life? Um, I pooed in the cupboard, but I was three. <laughs> What's been the most difficult thing you've ever shot? Uh, Madame Tenardier for Les Miserables, because she, she beat children. What accent do you think is the most difficult to master? Geordie or Narnai. <laughs> now, you famously do not have a process, is that correct? Yes. Though when playing such recognizable people, does that demand a different approach? Yes, because suddenly there's an awful lot of footage and research and documentation, and then you actually have to read stuff. Now, after reading a script, what do you do? Uh, I try to work out if I've had a gut reaction to it. What is the most ridiculous uh, fact that you know? Um, apparently, some cats are allergic to humans. Would you like a cup of tea? Oh, I would love some, thank you. And by the way, does this POV-style interview remind you of your peep show days? Yes. Yeah. Oh, after okay. you. No, after you. Oh, no, no, please, you're the guest. Oh, I insist. No, come on, after you. Oh, ladies first. No, come on. I, okay. Wait, well, just, oh, sorry. Oh, okay. That didn't work real. Sorry. Yeah, sure. Wow. Look at this room. Yeah. Well, and there's even more art. Yes, and this baby, oldest baby ever depicted in a painting, 34 years old. Wow. <laughs> and uh, look at this elaborate tea setup we have here. This is incredible. Well, it's nothing. It's just a little thing. Would you consider high tea to be the most British thing on earth? It's quite British, along with trying to get into a room through a door politely. What's the most British phrase ever? After you. And what joke would you say perfectly distills British humor? Pull my finger. Unless they're not going to do it. How do you suggest we drink this tea? Well, I'll be mum, shall I? I have no idea what that means. That means I'll pour. OK. Now, your first roles lean towards a very particular brand of comedy. How would you describe the humor to someone who's never seen it? Uh, quite dark, a bit culty, probably not for your mum. And how would you describe yourself? I think it's peculiar to describe oneself. Was there a time when you considered pivoting away from acting? No, can't do anything else. Can you describe your style in three words? Nope. What's an article of clothing that you can't bear to give away? Um, my biggest, comfiest pants, and it would be weird to give them away. Mm. This tea looks great. Doesn't it? This, this is a very good colour. Yeah, it looks really nice and cloudy. I think I've probably nailed it. What's the most extravagant thing in your wardrobe? Um, oh, thank you. Welcome. I have oh, the beautiful Stella McCartney dress that she made me for Vanity Fair and an Alexander McQueen clutch pack. Who's your favorite designer right now? That's quite hard because I don't think I could choose. Prada, Stella, Alexander McQueen, I don't know. What's a trend that you regret trying? Boob tubes. What's your go-to perfume? Jo Malone, Amber and Lavender. Is there any particular cause that's important for you to get behind? Uh, I would like all children to have relationship classes um, in schools. What's been the most positive change you've seen in the industry since you've started your career? Oh, I think the discussion about equality, although we're not there yet, at least the discussion has, is happening. In 40 years, what do you think people will be nostalgic for? A life before the internet. Sorry, hang on a moment. Favorite flower? Peonies. Favorite word? Buttock. 
the best 007 of all time. Oh, don't know, great. Sorry, hang on. Sure. Hello? Oh, hi! But today? Ah, uh, I'm a little bit busy. How many of you? Hang on, William. Olivia. Can we squeeze in another 10 people? Of course. Yeah, William says that's fine. Okay. Yes, don't turn up drunk though. Leave the dogs. Bye. Who was that? That was my mum. <laughs> Olivia, let's talk about fame. What's changed since winning an Oscar? Uh, I get to hang out here. And you've been dubbed a national treasure here in the UK. What are your thoughts on that label? I don't really know what that means. It sounds like an old teapot. Mm. What's been the most flattering fan moment that you've ever had? Someone said, Oh, Rachel Voice. <laughs> <laughs> what pre-fame job do you remember most fondly? Definitely my cleaning job. I loved it. Can you explain what it's like navigating the award show season? Um, you need good people around you just to sort of push you through it. And what about the red carpet? What's that like? That's awful. Um, you need comfy shoes. <laughs> Your Oscars acceptance speech was incredible. Thanks. Um, have you rewatched that since? No, not directly. Um, it was in the background while um, our babysitter filmed the kids as their reaction to it. <laughs> That's so sweet. Mm. Is there anyone you forgot to thank that you would want to give a little shout out to right now? Yes, please. Melissa and Jalitza. Olivia, for dinner this evening, lobster, partridge, scallops. Oh, could we have all of those? And do you have any gaduckens? We certainly do. Four gaduckens, please. Excellent. Thank you very much. If you had to rename yourself as a Spice Girl, what would your name be? Oh, Cuddly Spice. <laughs> oh, we have another room with another door. Let's do this, Olivia. After you. Holy what? <laughs> I was not expecting this. What can you expect from a dinner party like this? Um, well, there'll be lots of potatoes. <laughs> what songs end up on your dinner party playlist? Um, the Final Countdown by Europe. <sighs> if you had to have lunch with one of your characters, who would you dine with and what would you talk about? Queen Anne. Rabbits. How do you feel about some word associations? Yes, please. Okay. Selfies. I think they're awful. Uh, Spanx. Great, but sweaty. Bill Murray. I love him. So this isn't working terribly well. Do you want to come down here? Yeah, that's a bad idea. If you can go back in time, what would you tell your 16-year-old self? <gasps> Look at me, I'm back in time. <laughs> What's the worst advice you've ever received? Um, you don't need to say thank you quite so much. As someone who's been in a beautiful relationship for 25 years, what relationship advice could you offer me? Always be kind to each other. If you could interview anyone in the world, who would it be and why? Oh, Barack Obama, because I fancy him. What's something a character must have in order for you to play them? Mm, good lines and comfy shoes. And you've worked with some amazing ensemble cast. If you can create your own dream team ensemble cast, who would it be? Oh, you'd have to start with the Streep and the Dench, mm. and then the Hopkins. I could go on for a long time. So I'll, about 10 people, maybe 15, and then in a room like this, close the doors, free booze, and just let the cameras roll. And what film would that be? Uh, what happened once the doors closed? <laughs> I don't know. As a Yorgos Yanthamos alum, What's the most unique aspect How of... How did you say that again? Uh, Yorgos Lanthamos. Mm, that's terrible. How do you pronounce it? Yorgos Lanthamos. Sorry, carry on. What were you saying? What, what's the most unique aspect of being on set and working with that guy? <laughs> that guy. Sorry. Um, he is the kindest and the most brutally honest person you'll ever meet. Now, I heard that Phoebe Waller-Bridge wrote the Godmother Fleabag role specifically for you. Yeah. What did you like about Godmother? She's a total c if you reverse roles and you had to write a part for Phoebe, who would she be? I'd make her a tiny little hairy man. Olivia. Yeah. What's a question you've never been asked? Who would you marry, dog or cat? Ooh, that's a tough one. How did I say? Dog. Cat. Oh. What name would you give a secret society? Secret. What's the best Wi-Fi network name you've ever seen? Up your bum. Okay, Olivia, last question for you. Question number 73. Who is dining exquisitely with you this evening? Oh, um, well, we've got my mum and some rowdy friends, uh, the Rolling Stones and some Danish royalty. And you, we well, of course want no. you to stay. Wait, me? No, I couldn't possibly. How could I do that? Well, because I just asked you, it'd be rude not to. Yeah, but I'm so underdressed. There's no way. Oh, no, we've got that cup William. 
We insist. Come and stay. Get well with us. How can I say no to this offer? Yeah. Okay, cue the party music. It's time to party like we've never partied before. Tonight, the DJ will save your life. <laughs> oh, my God. It's not very really easy sitting down dancing. Can we have some uh, Shaka Khan? Have we got any Shaka Khan? Ooh. You should always look at yourself like that, because it's more flattering. Never look down. I don't know why they have mirrors uh, underneath your face. <clears throat> Can we, could we have a little gin to get started? Thank you. Do you like gin? <laughs>